Hi, this is Saqib Rahman from the OrthoClips podcast series, and today I'm with uh, Dr. Grant Hogue. He's an attending orthopedic surgeon at Boston Children's Hospital and instructor of orthopedic surgery at Harvard Medical School. And we're going to be talking about marijuana and fracture healing. What do we know? Thank you, Dr. Hogue, for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Great. So let's get into it. Um, I guess I want to first ask, how did you get interested in the topic? And maybe if you could relate it maybe to a particular patient case that illustrates the importance of this whole issue. Absolutely. And so it's a pretty specific patient who I treated um, when I was practicing in South Texas, a 14 year old, otherwise healthy female who had a, an ulnar shaft fracture, kind of a proximal third ulnar shaft, um, and otherwise it was great. We fixed her ulna, expected her to go about life without issues, but she went on to a non-union. Um, and in pediatric orthopedics, we have very little uh, experience with non-unions because kids generally heal so well at everything. Um, and so I was shocked to find out one that she didn't heal and that she was painful. And when we looked at her non-union, she really didn't have much bone growth at all. And her only risk factor was that she was a daily user of marijuana. Um, and that's really kind of what spurred this on. Like, is this something that we need to be looking about? Is this something that we should be asking about? Um, so we did her revision fixation she held off smoking for a few months and she healed beautifully. Okay, yeah, I mean, it, it, a lot of times these questions start from these anecdotal experience and cases and then you talk to people and find out that, uh, you know, when you share experiences, maybe this is happening elsewhere. It's, um, you know, and I think that as marijuana becomes more legalized, I don't know if use is gonna increase or not, but I think it's certainly something that we need to be thinking about. Um, so maybe tell us about your study that was presented at uh, POSNA earlier this year at your annual meeting um, and a little bit of what you learned from it and what we should know. Absolutely. And so I think it's important um, that you noted that as uh, different substances are legalized, um, it is pretty reasonable to think that consumption of these substances amongst young people and adults as well will increase. Um, and, you know, there's, there's no real judgment involved in that from our end. Many of these things are now legal substances, but because they previously weren't legal and because they previously were much harder to get a hold of, we don't have very good research on how these affect bone biology in how they affect fracture healing and fracture biology. Um, and so because of that, we are all of a sudden pushed into a situation where we have to redo a lot of the literature that we did on the, in the 80s and 90s in terms of nicotine and alcohol. And so we really need to basically take, you know, very similar study designs of high quality studies done in nicotine and alcohol and how they affect fracture healing and start applying those to these new substances that are being legalized. And so one of the, I believe, most important things that we learned in our study is that we've seen an evolution in substance of choice among the adolescent population. Um, so if you look back at trauma data from the 80s or 90s, you would see that the substance of choice for adolescents was predominantly alcohol. Um, because it was readily available, you could get a fake ID, or maybe you pay an older sibling to procure it for you. Uh, whereas now, in this study, we have shown a shift that the substance of choice is evolving, and it's likely marijuana. Um, so in our study, only 6% of the patients had a positive ethanol, whereas 16% in the study screened positive for marijuana metabolites. Um, so I, I think first and foremost, most, uh, that is the, the most important take home is that substance of choice is evolving and we need to be aware of that. Um, and then I think things that are probably a, a little bit more provocative 
Um, but scientifically really need to be worked out more are how does marijuana affect bone healing? And so if you look at the data for non-operatively managed fractures, we were able to show an association between marijuana use and slower healing. But you know that, that's just a p-value in and of itself. And when we did a regression analysis, we showed that there wasn't really a very strong correlation. Um, when we did that same thing with operatively treated fractures, we could see that the time to union in surgically treated patients was longer for those with positive marijuana metabolites and the regression analysis did show some correlation there. Um, you know, all of this is our preliminary data. And so we are gathering more patient data. We're gathering longer follow-up before we publish something definitive because I think it's worthwhile to get this right the first time. Yeah, that's some interesting points, especially about how, I guess, you really were looking at um, the question of starting with your patient. Um, does marijuana use potentially have an effect on delaying fracture healing or being a risk factor for non-union? But I guess in your study set, you were able to also just kind of show the prevalence of this versus alcohol use. Am I hearing that correctly? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's something that 10 years ago, we definitely would not have seen. That's interesting. Um, so one of the other questions I had was, um, you know, with the need for multimodal pain therapy, uh, which has come to the forefront in the last year or two, uh, what do you think will be the place for marijuana, uh, especially as legalization for recreational use and just legal use is expanding as we kind of discussed? Um, because, you know, we have to balance sort of the known risks of opioids, which is a well-studied um, substance with lesser known risks of marijuana. So how do you see, you know, if this is a legitimate uh, drug that can be used, how do you see that? I mean, there are certainly physicians who feel more comfortable. They'll tell their patients will say, listen, I'm smoking marijuana. And they'll say, good, <laughs> better than taking the opioids. Um, so what are your thoughts on that? So I think as, as physicians, our first job is to turn the unknown into the known before we start either prescribing or acknowledging something. Um, and so I think that we've gotten a little bit ahead of ourselves with marijuana in that regard. And so I think maybe the first step isn't just to say, hey, let's sign off on our patients using marijuana, but maybe the first step is determine which substances within marijuana are going to be particularly active in the pain control setting. And then what is the best route of consumption for those substances? And so I think particularly in the, the pediatric setting, that's difficult to do because we can't just let our patients you know, smoke marijuana because it's still not re legal for children. But there are a lot of ongoing studies with CBD oil, um, rather um, rubbed on the skin or you know, taken orally. And so I think in pediatrics, that'll be the first step. Um, in overall orthopedics, I, I think that we need to be a little bit better with our basic science before we completely sign off on a new substance. We, if we're going to treat it like a medicine, it has to be vetted like a medicine. Yeah, and you brought up um, a couple of points about another question I was thinking about was, you know, I think your um, your investigation was a retrospective study, you know, started with a question, you kind of clarified a patient case that made you think about it. And um, you found some statistically significant data, you, you, you know, you sort of acknowledge that we probably need to uh, learn a lot more here. Um, and there's definitely, I feel like there are challenges with investigating this. I mean, you just brought up one point, um, you know, it's illegal for children. So how do you know, if you really want to get better, better data and you want to investigate it like a drug, and that often means randomized control trials. I mean, that's probably not happening. But um, so what are some suggestions uh, you have for investigators out there interested in looking at this? How do you sort of uh, 
what are some concrete steps to kind of move forward? Uh, do we look at this more in adults? Do we sort of focus a little bit first on the basic science? What are some of your suggestions for maybe some of our listeners who are thinking about investigating this? So I think that, that the first step forward for any legitimate use over the long term, it, I, I think everything starts in the lab. You know, we, we start kind of the basis of what is known at the bench. Um, and whether that is in, you know, basic science or further along into animal studies and then human trials. Um, but I think the first part is determining which of these substances and which part um, are truly active in pain control. And there are some things that we can do along the way, you know, prospectively with patients. Um, things like CBD oil, which a lot of pain management systems are researching pretty heavily right now. I know at Boston Children's, it's something that our pain management group is really looking into. Um, but I think that, you know, the answer of, you know, are randomized controlled trials ethical? Certainly not in children right now. Um, prospectively in adults, I think if people are already using something recreationally, then you can prospectively, you know, use like what they're doing already to try to study it, but it's not easy. And so the kind of the, the only easy answer is that we need to start in the lab. That's a really good point. Um, well, um, you know, a lot of our listeners are uh, residents and um, uh, they're just learning orthopedics. Any last, um, you know, parting words, tips, you know, for when patients are uh, in our clinics and we're seeing and treating them, are you finding that you're having to teach your residents to think more about this, ask more about it? Um, any training tips on this topic uh, as we conclude the uh, interview? You know, I think, at least for me, what I learned from the situation with my patient that we talked about at the beginning, one of the non-union, is that I asked her if she took any non-prescribed medications or substances and she initially didn't tell me. And the reason she didn't tell me is because I was not conveying to her that she could tell me those things without fear of me judging her. Um, and so I, what I would tell residents and what I would say we really need to work on is conveying to our patients that we are not here to judge you. We're here to treat you and help you and if you'll just please tell me what you're putting in our body, in your body, I can do my job better. That's a great point. That's a great point. All comes down to uh, communication, doesn't it? And sometimes you think you're communicating, but you're not getting what you want because you haven't established that trust. So Absolutely. And we, we really do as physicians often people just to give us carte blanche with their trust, but that's not how it works. And that's, that, that's for me kind of a big personal take home is I need to work harder to build trust, particularly with young people. Great, great points. Very interesting stuff. Clearly, uh, uh, I think, you know, what do we know? We know a little bit, it seems like about this, but it seems like there's a lot to learn and probably, uh, you know, some new directions to take, uh, like you said, to really find this out uh, and treat our patients um, with the appropriate knowledge that, uh, that uh, they deserve. Well, it's been great talking to you. I've been with um, Dr. Grant Hogue at uh, Boston Children's Hospital and Harvard Medical School. We've been talking about marijuana and fracture healing. Dr. Hogue, I wanna thank you for coming on the podcast. It's been, uh, it's been fun. Thank you so much, I appreciate it.